Howdy everyone, welcome to the Serial Geek TV YouTube channel. My name is James Etock and today we're going to take a look at the directorial style and the legend that is Tom Tadaranowitz, a man with a five syllable surname. When I was a kid and saw his name pop up in the end credits, I used to refer to him as Tom Tatarinowitz. It wasn't until I met the man in 2005 that I learned how to nearly pronounce his surname. And only within the last 10 years I realized to emphasize the now part of his name. Tataranowitz, Tom Tataranowitz. Anyway, when production of the He-Man cartoon began, whilst waiting for the storyboard production to begin, Tom Tataranowitz was a character designer, worked on some of the key rotoscope animation, and even did some layout artwork on the series. The man very much had a hand in everything. Tom storyboarded episodes such as A Beastly Sideshow and Frady Cat, although his ridiculously strong strength of visual storytelling had yet to make itself known, with the directorial duties often being handled by the talented filmation veteran directors. A moment that really made Tom stand out from the talented crowd was when he came up with the idea for one particular He-Man episode. He had been a fan of Hal Foster's Prince Valiant comic strip. In one specific comic strip, Prince Valiant, after believing he had killed a man, threw the singing sword into the ocean, relinquishing his role. Well, Tom decided that would make for a good episode of He-Man. He-Man kills someone and then surrenders his powers. I mean, even after all these years just saying that, it still kind of gives me goosebumps. Weird. I remember when I first had an internet connection in late 1995, I had no idea how many episodes of the series had been produced. Back then, this information was simply not available. Also, I should mention that as a kid, I had missed certain episodes of the series. In those earliest days of the He-Man and She-Ra community, a guy called Scott White appeared and stated that he had recorded 99% of the series. And sure enough, he had. Well, he mentioned an episode in which He-Man, believing he had killed someone, threw the mighty Sword of Power into the abyss surrounding Castle Greyskull. My first reaction, pah, I honestly did not believe that such an episode existed. I truly believe that Filmation would never have produced an episode so daring, so risky. This was He-Man after all. As entertaining as the show was, the idea of death in an episode of He-Man, along with such a dramatic moment as him relinquishing his powers, seemed impossible. Ever think of going into the circus? <laughs> Put me down! A day or two later, Scott sent over a WAV file and, well, it blew my mind hearing He-Man say the line, Today I broke a promise and proved myself unworthy of the great power that was given me. And if I am unworthy, I can no longer permit myself to be He-Man. Let the power return! A month or two later, Scott sent me the episode and wow, just incredible. Actually, this right here is the very VHS that Scott White sent over in 1996 and yes, it still works. One notable thing about the problem with power right off the bat was the title card. The only title card of the He-Man and She-Ra series to feature a based on an idea by credit. And even back in 1996, I took note of this. Okay, so the talented Bob Ford wrote this, but Tom Tadaranowitz came up with this idea? For Filmation to credit someone just for an idea seemed very notable. In 1997, a guy called Owen Sharp popped up with a website, which is still available as of this recording. He was the first person to list every single episode of the series and he also revealed that there were 28 episodes in She-Ra's second season. At that point, we only knew of 14. One of the things Owen Sharp pointed out to me during our conversations was the work of Tom Tadaranowitz in the She-Ra series. Tom had begun directorial duties at Filmation with She-Ra and I'm so thankful he did. Owen explained that whenever Tom's name popped up in an episode, it often meant that good things would happen visually. Owen then went on to ask me if I'd ever seen the She-Ra episode Sweet Bee's Home. I had not, and the title didn't sound like an episode of She-Ra that would really appeal to me. I had heard of Sweet Bee and seen the figure posted online in very low quality JPEGs. An episode focusing on that sickly sweet doll. No, thank you. 
Within a week, Owen sent over a VHS tape he had edited in the 80s with clips from Sweet Bee's home. Much like the problem with power, I could not believe what I was seeing. Here was an episode that added an entirely new dimension to He-Man. We saw the character fallible, embarrassed, awkward, nervous, smitten with Sweet Bee. However, it wasn't just the story, it was the animation and direction. In the hands of another director, Sweet Bee's home would not have been as good, and I think this is largely in part to the episode being the brainchild of writer Bob Ford and Tom T himself. They were both in their early 20s and considered Froster to be the most striking female in the series and wanted to have her animated in a way to accentuate her beauty, and boy did they ever. Now, I said in the hands of another director this episode would not have been as good. This is not a knock on other filmation directors. But Tom T's episodes were something else. But, I hear you ask, how can a director of a cartoon that utilises stock footage be noteworthy? Well, they can. What Tom Tadaranowitz did is look at the Filmation stock system and apply it in the most creative of ways. Rather than have a character simply stand there talking in close-up, Tom would utilise the stock so that the characters blinked realistically, their eyes would widen to accentuate certain words, and they would even smile as they talked with very specific pieces of dialogue. Characters nearby would react with looks or expressions and triple eye blinks. I haven't even talked about triple eye blinks. In order to make the characters feel a little more real, Tom would have them blink more in shots, and when a piece of dialogue was peppered with a little more emotion, as you can see in this shot with Glimmer, the character would blink faster. It's one of my favourite techniques that Tom employed. You may not even realise it when you watch an episode of She-Ra, but be sure to look out for these little moments. Animation. Now this was another of Tom's plus points. He would choose specific animators for certain scenes as he knew their strengths. One particular animator that he was a fan of was Sherry Wheeler. Sherry was a female animator with an amazing talent for character animation. I guarantee when I show you her work, you'll recognise at least one piece of animation. Not only was her animation beautiful, but Tom would time the sequences to get the best reactions possible. Throughout the episodes that he directed, Tom would ensure that each and every shot would be very strong and the best that it could be. Couldn't be better. Oh boy. Well, that's a sweet name. And Tom was a young, hungry director determined to make a statement with his work. As he has said himself, he was a pain in the ass to the heads at Filmation because he would try to push the envelope. Everything from the problem with power to Sweet Bee's home was challenged at some point during production, and Tom fought for his vision each and every time. I have come this far in the video and I have yet to mention his directorial style. That obviously includes his ability to utilise the stock in a specific way as well as choosing the right animators for specific scenes. Well, he also knew what worked visually, making some action scenes that could look rather dull leap from the screen. This probably had something to do with the fact that he was also the storyboard supervisor, which meant that he could ask for stronger storyboards even on episodes that he didn't direct. But for examples of the episodes that he directed, just look at these sequences with camera angles that were not all that common in other episodes of the series. Tom always worked within the budget of the series, but he made sure every penny counted. His work clearly made an impression with Filmation President Lou Scheimer as he was chosen to direct the epic animated movie Brave Star The Legend. I'll talk a great deal about that in another video, but you can see just by looking at these sequences how much he was putting into it and how far he was pushing the talent at Filmation. The one crying shame is that Tom never directed an episode of He-Man. I would love to have seen his take on certain episodes and make flat scenes like this look like this. In short, the She-Ra fans had much to celebrate. In the last 18 or so years I've gotten to know Tom T personally. He's one of the kindest people you could ever hope to meet and has spurred me on creatively when I've been at my lowest. So to Tom T I give a huge thank you on behalf of myself and all the Filmation fans for giving it your all whilst at the studio. And finally here's a little bonus for you. Bob Ford's original script for The Problem With Power had He-Man and Teela simply walking away together, with He-Man offering to carry Teela. He had already picked her up from the rubble and placed her down in the original script. 
However, when Tom Tadaranowitz illustrated the storyboard, he decided to use the same dialogue, moving certain pieces around, and have He-Man carry Teela off into the sunset, which director Gwen Wetzler brought to life beautifully, creating one of the most iconic and romantic endings to an episode. Now, let us watch that scene together because it's wonderful. Oh no, Teela. Oh. Teela? Oh. I must have bumped my head. Teela, you're all right? Why, he man I didn't know you cared. <sighs> I was worried. I'm fine. Let's go home. <laughs> uh, he man Yes, Teela? You can put me down now. If you don't feel up to walking, I can carry you back. It's no trouble, you know. He man I'm fine. Trust me. I trust you, but to be on the safe side, maybe I should carry you part of the way. What good will carrying me part of the way do? I don't know, I just thought... So, thank you for watching this video. Please be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe, and I shall catch you on the next one.